you know, there's always this um, attempt, it seems, uh, to minimize the contributions and the achievements of African people against oppression. But of course, we can't participate in that as Africans. We would be participating uh, in our own demise. We would be also participating uh, in what has become the uh, general role of uh, white uh, Western uh, racial domination uh, to assault African people. I mean, take, for example, the case of uh, President Robert Mugabe uh, of Zimbabwe, probably uh, the most popular uh, leader in Africa today, if you ask Africans on the continent. Uh, and whenever I travel on the continent, I ask uh, young people, who do you think represents Africa uh, the most as an independent uh, leader, one who has uh, his or her own sense of uh, destiny for Africa? And almost 90% uh, of them will tell you Robert Mugabe. Now, this is an interesting uh, situation because if you uh, talk to people in the West, they would see Robert Mugabe almost as a demon. But who has demonized him? He, he was not de demonized by his own people. Uh, he was not demonized by the people who understand the history of Zimbabwe. And I always like to tell people that in 19... Um, 80, uh, I first went to Zimbabwe, and I went back in uh, 81 and stayed to 82. I worked uh, in Zimbabwe uh, as a trainer of journalists at what was then the old ZIMCO, the Zimbabwe Institute of Mass Communication. And one of the things that impressed me most about uh, the leadership of Robert Mugabe during those period, uh, that period of time was that he felt, he believed deeply in his heart that it was possible to have reconciliation between uh, those people who had fought in this second Chimaranga against the racists, against those who wanted to keep black people oppressed, against those who believed that black people were not even humans, against those who had murdered, brutally murdered black people and and dumped their bodies in mass graves. He believed that there was a reconciliation, that it was possible. In fact, his first year as leader of the country, he called it a year of reconciliation. In fact, not only did he call it that, he was recognized by Britain and by the United States as perhaps one of the greatest, most brilliant, intelligent leaders of Africa at that time. And uh, uh, they were willing to do almost anything, it seemed, for him. Until what they did not do was to come through with the Lancaster House Agreement. Where they had promised uh, to do as much as they could to help uh, the government of Zimbabwe uh, through a transition where the whites who own nearly 75% of the entire country of Zimbabwe, where, where those white people uh, would transition out and they would be, the land would be purchased with money from the United States and Britain. And when Britain and the United States did not do that, and for 20 years, Mugabe waited and they did not do it. And then the people demanded of him, we must get the land for which we have fought. And when he began, his government began to move on those farmers who had uh, retained this ill-gotten land. And people have to remember that this land was not purchased by these white farmers. They, 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 they took it, and they took it illegally. And not only did they take it illegally, but they took it uh, even though there was resistance from the incredibly brilliant and courageous uh, uh, woman leader, Nehanda, and, and Kaguvi, the, the man who worked with her to fight against them in the 1890s. They took this land. 
And not only did they take the land, then they basically enslaved the people. And so Mugabe, Zanu, and uh, Zapu, and Zanu PF uh, ultimately fought and struggled from bases in Zambia and bases in Mozambique until they were able to defeat the Rhodesian army and bring about true independence in Zimbabwe. And then, so after 20 years, they take the land and redistribute it to the masses of people. And so people are upset. But uh, I've always known uh, Robert Mugabe to be an honest man, a decent man, uh, one who believes strongly in his country. And if people uh, think in the United States that George Washington is the father of the United States, well, the father of Zimbabwe is Robert Mugabe. And the people who know their history and who have not been misled or confused uh, by the Western media and who have not been bought off by uh, Western interests uh, or capitalist interests who have come into Zimbabwe with all kinds of money, millions of dollars, spreading it around to create um, confusion in that country. Those people who have not been confused by that know quite well that what Robert Mugabe is, has done and is doing is not for his own interest, not for his material um, wealth or, or for uh, the accumulation of wealth or uh, personal uh, uh, aggrandizement or anything like that. He, it is for the fact that he believes firmly in justice and he believes also that it is possible to have racial Reconciliation. He still believes that to this day, even though the people who have fought against him most and the people who've tried to undermine his government most have been the white people, those who still live in Zimbabwe and some who live, many who live outside of that country. So uh, I give honor uh, to Robert Mugabe, uh, to uh, his uh, courage and to his belief in uh, African uh, transformation and to those people in the country, those patriots in the country who still fight to have an African curriculum in the school system and who want to change Zimbabwe so that it becomes truly the most revolutionary and enlightened progressive country on the African continent and perhaps one of the few in the world to believe truly in total human freedom. All praise to the Zimbabwean people for their recent election.